Hey Pete, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks Fari, how are you? I am great man, I am in an art gallery having an interview with the owner, that's as great as one can be I suppose. <laughs> hey. Welcome, welcome. So you are Peter Kaunda. you are the owner of Artillery Gallery. Correct. Um, what else should maybe someone who's watching this know about you? Like obviously you're interested in art. <laughs> right. What else is, is, who else is Peter besides, you know, the, the gallery? Well, I actually stem from a creative background. Yeah. Uh, I worked in advertising uh, for a couple of advertising agencies. Uh, I still dabble in advertising as a graphic designer. I worked uh, as an artistic director for a number of uh, agencies. I think that term artistic director also yeah. kind of led me into an appreciation of art and just allowed me to appreciate that there was an artistic element to the practice. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so now um, you call yourself the, the patron of the arts. Yes, yes. What, what does that title mean to you and why that? Why patron of the arts? Yeah. It sounded, it sounded fancy. <laughs> <laughs> you had to give yourself a fancy title. Yeah. Well, no, no, honestly though. Uh, I, I looked into the arts the realm, the arts realm, and what people who support the arts call themselves. Yeah. And I appreciated the fact that uh, many of them recognize themselves as patrons. And it's, it's merely a representation of you as a supporter of yeah. the arts. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And how long have you been actively supporting you know, the arts industry? Uh, since 2014, effectively. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's really interesting. And I suppose we're going to touch on that as, as we go. But um, coming to the space that we're in right now, uh, Artillery Gallery, right. um, what problem are you trying to solve here? Like, why did you create this, this, this space? Uh, so, yeah, as I mentioned, I started appreciating art in 2014. Yeah. At the time, I set up a space uh, at Dooney State, actually. Yeah, and it was called Hope Shop, and it was it was actually an, an, an intentional journey to venture into, you know, understanding the lost art of Africa, you know. Yeah. And then it never became that. I, I met contemporary artists during the time, uh, the likes of Mishik Masamvu, and they afforded me an appreciation of what contemporary art is. Yeah. And then I fell in love with that culture, and at, at that space. Uh, it didn't seem ideal to actually open up what I then envisioned was deserving of contemporary art. Yeah. And so we decided to journey on finding an ideal space, uh, creating uh, a contemporary international standard gallery, and that's when artillery came about. And that's how you ended up here. Yeah. It was a five-year journey actually from uh, meeting these contemporary artists to actually setting up this space. That sounds like a long time. What was happening in these five years? <laughs> uh, it was a lot of studio visits, uh, meeting artists, engaging with them, conversating, and that's where the collecting culture stemmed. That's literally when I started collecting artworks, uh, you know, through meeting artists in their, you know, their studio yeah. spaces. Yeah, yeah. And so, oh, so, so essentially you were learning, um, is it fair to say you were learning like what the spaces look like and also like collecting art at, at the same time. Was, was the vision to open a space like this already there or that came along as you like collected and... and it, like it came along as I started engaging with artists and appreciating what they were expecting from the space, what was lacking in, in Zimbabwe yeah. and yeah, then we realized how we could cover a gap, you know, that wasn't being satisfied, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that, that's really interesting because I thought it was the way I envisioned it is you had this grand vision that you executed, but the the more I talk to you, the more it seems like it's really something that came along as you immersed yourself in the culture yeah. more and more. Uh, during that time, what were some of the things you were seeing? Um, the challenges that artists were were facing uh, locally that then informed the space that we're in right now? Well, first and foremost, I must say that the one thing that led me to fall in love with art yeah. was the passion that exists in artists. You know, it's, it's just unwavering, you know? I've seen people create work continuously in their studio spaces, yeah. regardless of whether they are selling it or not, you know? Having stacks of works in their studios. And then the narrative that they share is just so magical. It's yeah. very powerful. 
uh, I had been going through an experience myself at the time. And conversating with artists just enriched my understanding of what I was going through. And I just realized that, but why are we ignoring these people? You know, the world <laughs> yeah. largely ignores these people yeah. and undermines yeah. them, yet they're brilliant, <laughs> exceptional minds. So that's initially what led me into realizing that, no, wait a minute, I've got to make more noise about you know, these personalities these, these and, people. and what they're saying. You know, I think the answer to many of our global problems exists in these minds, you know, yeah. and yeah. yet we undermine <laughs> them often. So that was the, the initial intent to kind of to actually put a limelight on that. On that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy because I think in some ways we have something in common because <laughs> I go around putting a camera in front of people who I think are doing like really, really amazing things, isn't it? And right. so you go from a guy who is collecting art right. to a guy who now owns a gallery. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> What are some of the things that in that transition um, you didn't expect but happened, maybe both positive and negative? I didn't expect the hardship. It's, it's, it's a <laughs> very, I mean, it's, it's a very difficult space to be in. Yeah. Uh, you'll appreciate that. I think as far as I'm concerned, art is arguably the only space where the actual product is an individual. It's a human being. And yeah. So we're always dealing with different emotions with every show. We're dealing with different backgrounds. Yeah. It's unlike selling bread, you know, the, the ingredients are the you same. Put it in the, the product oven, is the same. Yeah. Boom, and, you know, you, yeah. you slice it up and you sell it at a certain price. With art, it's always different, you know. The narratives are different. The backgrounds are different. The value of the work is different. Yeah, but the they're motives. All, yeah, the motives are different. But it's all very important at the same time, you know. Yeah. So you've got to be consistent whilst at the same time, you know, adapting all the time to different uh, backgrounds and personalities. And yeah. Yeah, that, was, that was very hard for me too. And so, and so it's fantastic that you talk about, you know, the artist being a product because I think one of the, the risks that comes with, with, with owning a, a gallery, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that artists can very quickly become a commodity or they can very quickly become commodified, right? Uh, right. It almost becomes like capitalism for lack of a better term that you know you bring the art into here you sell it you take your cut and stuff like that how do you how do you then go about like avoiding stuff like that where the re, where the relationship becomes maybe too transactional okay i think uh, to begin with yeah uh, i think artists are a commodity yeah i think maybe the sensitive aspect is that the fact that the artist as an individual yeah. is the product yeah uh, Zimbabwe loses a lot by failure to understand that, yeah, uh, from an economic perspective. Because the okay. moment an artist leaves the country, they go and create exactly what they were creating locally, and it sells there, you know? Yeah. And you don't benefit you don't from that, anything. you know? <laughs> so you lose that commodity, the actual individual, yeah? And then there's the fact that uh, in that entire space, there's an assumption that artists are being exploited by yeah. monetizing their product without realizing that in many cases artists are actually struggling to survive and sustain themselves because they are the commodity because there's no industry around them in most cases and yeah. and when there is an industry people now think there's exploitation taking place yeah. but in all honesty <laughs> uh, I, I aspire for artists to be worth millions to, to like exorbitant yeah. millions you know like yeah monies that people look and think but honestly are we still selling something here <laughs> or have we created some yeah, capitalistic yeah, system yeah, yeah. i'm like yeah that's fine you know let's let's have more of that you know yeah. i want to see more of that coming out of zimbabwe you know yeah. so and i think it's fair because i i, I think I, I i might have actually walked into here with with those same assumptions because like you're saying is it not good for them to actually <laughs> make money from, yeah. from their art and yeah. have people who can facilitate the making of that money. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's an interesting conversation that we really should be looking into our biases. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's... And then, more broadly, as a gallery, right? Because, and again, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I, my assumption is that uh, you're looking to make money from this, right? And so... Um, what are the expenses that you incur as a business and then where do you get back your money as a business? Uh, first and foremost, when I entered in this space, yeah. 
I wasn't necessarily looking to make money. Yeah. Uh, I was looking to learn and understand what artists were saying and what the world was neglecting, what they were ignoring, you know? Yeah. So I was, I was honestly looking for the voice of God and the voice of reason, you know? Uh, I found a lot of that in the conversations that I had with artists. Yeah. And that's why I decided, hey, I want to support these people. And that's why I recognize myself as a patron rather than a gallerist or a curator or anything of that sort, yeah. you know? Uh, so that's been the, the primary uh, inspiration, yeah. yeah. And, and so I've just decided I'll figure out ways to achieve this, whether I make the money or not, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then of course the money is important because we live in a capitalistic society. Yeah. And so we've been studying a lot about how others monetize uh, the industry and how others sustain themselves. And we've created products ourselves that we're developing and hoping that will sustain us as well as we go forward. Yeah. And yeah, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And, and, and so one of the, there's a poster I read on uh, Friday night when you were opening uh, Johnson Mugabe's exhibition, yeah. um, which is um, it's like a subscription model. Yes, yes. Maybe also, let's uh, talk a bit more about that. Uh, so that's called real art. Yeah. Uh, it's literally the coming together of real estate and art. And how this came about was actually inspired by the COVID period. Yeah. Uh, we were on lockdown and we realized, hey, wait a minute. Uh, what do we do if this lockdown exists in perpetuity, like forever? And then yeah. we thought, okay, uh, how about we create, we expand the gallery into people's homes? Uh, where they're all, uh, you know, currently locked down, you yeah. know? <laughs> and also because we appreciated the fact that in Zimbabwe, not many people actually appreciate or acquire art. Yeah. And when you go into many of the homes around Zimbabwe, you realize that there are many blank walls, you know? And so we thought, Why those are, those are golden space? gems to us, you know? When, you, <laughs> when I see a blank wall, I'm like, geez, you know? <laughs> let's put some art there, you know? Yeah. And so we thought, well, let's... In, try and kick off a concept that people will appreciate and that they can also afford. So yeah. we've created a, a subscription model that allows people to actually appreciate work that's worth more than what they're subscribing for. I mean, we've got a package for as low as $10, uh, which was- $10 intended, a month? $10 a month, yes, oh. yeah, yeah. And then we rotate your artworks. But you're appreciating works that are about $500 or $1,000 at that price. Yeah. And the idea was to say, hey, wait a minute, uh, We've got people in spaces like flats, you know. Uh, you've got young young people that have just started their careers, yeah. and you also want to catch them and have them interested in art at that early stage. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got a package that's uh, our highest package was fifty dollars, and that's also targeting corporates, and you get the entire experience with that. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, literally, when we come in, install the artwork. We'll come with some canapes and we'll bring you wine and cheese so you can have the full okay. experience of yeah. what an exhibition opening is. Yeah. Invite your friends at your house or at your office, have some corporate friends. And so that's really what real art is about. It's about having people appreciate that uh, your real estate is largely complemented by the art that's within it. And, yeah. and it's not just about sitting on the couch and watching television. You know? <laughs> That's, yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting thing because something you touched on there is <clears throat> when you spoke about the, the lower tier package or at least the lower priced package is, is really about accessibility and one of the assumptions that people have and maybe including myself <laughs> regarding art is that um, it's a rich man's game uh, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And so in a separate interview you did, you, one of the things you mentioned is that a person doesn't necessarily have to be rich to, to have art, right? Yeah. And so I'm wondering for someone who wants to go into collecting art and they, they don't know like where to start, what are like some of the things you would maybe advise or point them to do? Uh, to begin with, I'm not rich, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I do have a collection. Yeah. Uh, I have a decent collection. Uh, with some very reputable artists, uh, Zimbabwean contemporary artists. Yeah. And it all started from relationships to begin with. Uh, artists, like I said, they're human beings, they're individuals, and they're open to negotiation. Yeah. Uh, many artists that I've met have been open to allowing me to pay in installments. Uh, and that's, that's been the initial way that I, I acquired a Look lot of my art. Yeah, yeah, from paying the artworks in installments 
And I think a lot of people could do that. I mean, many people in Zimbabwe that I know have acquired lots of their furniture because a certain <laughs> store allowed them to pay in to installments, pay installments. You know, with higher yeah. purchases and things of that sort. So once you get to appreciate that the artists are open to that uh, sort of negotiation, then you can... It makes things it, a bit easier. Yeah, it makes it easier and you can yeah. take off. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. And then so coming back to, to real art as a model, like how long have you guys employed that and <clears throat> how, how has the traction been? In so we kicked it off, like I said, soon after COVID. Uh, so just yeah. as we go, got back from COVID, then we started uh, the Real Art Initiative. Yeah. We were very fortunate to collaborate with an architectural firm, uh, TDW. And oh, Troika. Yeah, Troika. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal, guys phenomenal guys. <laughs> uh, we love their energy and they love what we're doing as well. And they so happen to be in the space of uh, real, real estate, estate, you know, yeah. and, and with the clientele that we're also targeting. So we thought, okay, well, if we could tap into just their clientele, I think we could be successful in yeah. literally uh, getting this off the ground. And so we've set up in their offices and they've introduced us to many of uh, their clients as well. So we started installing uh, a lot of uh, installations in their in clients' those place. Places, yeah. in those spaces. And, and it's, it's growing slowly. Uh, now, of course, because you know, we've got the gallery running and we've also now got to uh, give birth to this new thing, yeah. uh, we're now learning to share those responsibilities and grow uh, yeah. the concept. But I think real art is the next big thing. Uh, some people are unfamiliar with the culture of gallery spaces. Some people are resistant about yeah. gallery spaces. <laughs> so, but I think everybody's got a home and they'd like to make that home feel comfortable. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we'll, we'll push it and it will be a success. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really fantastic. And, and I, I really hope it, 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 it does succeed because like you've said, um, we, and I don't know if this is a fair thing to say, but um, our as Zimbabweans, our appreciation of, of art is this room to grow is how I'd say it. Right, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and it seems like that's one of the things that uh, will, will take us there. Absolutely. So another thing you said in a, in a previous interview um, <clears throat> regarding business models was um, at a certain time you stopped uh, taking commissions from from art so essentially maybe to just give a background to people listening in yeah. uh, if like the artwork behind you uh, how galleries usually do things is if you sell it uh, they take their cut yeah uh, exactly. and that's how that's one of the ways they sustain this uh, yeah. themselves and so at a certain point you stopped taking these cuts so that to me that was very interesting because one that must have been a hard decision to take Right, <laughs> because that's a revenue stream. It, it's how you're sustaining operations, right. and you're essentially saying uh, we're going to leave this money, or we're going to remove this money from our potential streams. Right. Uh, is that still the case? And even if it's not, um, what was the thinking behind the decision to stop taking uh, commissions? So as it is now, yeah, uh, that exists under conditions. Uh, okay. So the idea is to eventually run multiple streams of income in different spaces that complement the arts. Yeah. And so that we can entirely not take commissions. Yeah. Uh, but we, at, at, as it is right now, what I can tell you is that all real art subscriptions, uh, once an artwork is sold, so we're just taking the subscription. And yeah. so we're sustaining the business of the subscriptions. And if an artwork is sold through that platform, the artist takes 100%. Oh, so with, with real art, if... I have uh, a piece in my in my space in my home in my studio in my office yes. and I sell it I am the one who gets to retain the commission. Uh, yes, that also happens. So the reason why we've decided not to take a commission of a real art uh, acquisition is because we want to create that opportunity to say maybe there is a third party that's going to facilitate a sale. Maybe it's in my house and a friend of mine buys it then we have that allowance to say the artist and you can now negotiate and say hey artist how about you oh, give this okay. guy a commission instead of us you know okay uh, because yeah. they've succeeded but i mean in the instance that you buy it within your space uh, yeah. you wouldn't be taking a commission off yeah. that and the yeah. artist would take 100 percent off that uh, we've also created a concept called culture curators yeah and culture curators is an experience that we've created around the gallery uh, where we have stalls come in and exhibit their works and we pretty much have a vibe around the gallery and we've yeah. got uh, 
you know it's like a market day yeah like a market day yeah so we kind of make income from that and so when we have culture creatives a uh, culture creatives night all the works in the gallery uh, also we don't take a commission off that so yeah. yeah it's those two instances that we've initially decided to not take a commission off yeah. but if it's a standard uh, exhibition we still do take commissions and yeah okay. yeah i hear you and so what's the thinking behind uh loosening that group a bit it was a conversation with an artist i spoke honestly with one artist before yeah. that we had exhibited and i asked them i said listen Commissions seem to be a sticking issue. I think the issue around galleries is about they are taking money that artists think that they don't deserve. Oh, and so that thing we were talking about before about capitalists. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And so because I wasn't venturing in the arts that way, because I was purely trying to support and sustain the arts space, uplift. I thought, yeah. well, uh, let me listen to what the artists want. And so this one artist said, well, I'd be happy to take 100%. And I thought, okay, well, let's, 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 go let's figure it. out how to do that, you know. And so this is us working towards figuring out how to do it. Yeah. Interesting <clears throat> enough, I spoke to some artists about this. Yeah. And some of them were very hesitant. And they said, listen, uh, we're happy with the model as it exists. Yeah. It's existed for a long time. Just keep it going. And then to my surprise, yeah. uh, I came across the same concept being celebrated in the United States uh, by the Dean Collection, uh, which is... Uh, Alicia Keys and her husband, Swiss Beats. Yeah. And they actually have a fair that's called the No Commissions Art Fair. So, oh, so. yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and another interesting aspect is that they have a focus towards uh, African or black artists. And so we thought, hey, well, uh, we're in that space as well. Looks a bit similar. <laughs> Hopefully, one day, fingers crossed. Uh, we can get the attention of the Dean collection yeah. and have them come. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can create an experience. If we had Alicia Keys in Zimbabwe, in Zim, I'm sure we'll make enough money doing other <laughs> things and we can celebrate the artists. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So yeah would, that, would, that really would be sensational. <laughs> yeah, it would be lovely to collaborate with them and, and create something in, in Africa, in Zimbabwe. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially having them here as well. That would, that would really be fantastic. Just the, the spotlight it would, it would put on, on our artists, yeah. on our yeah. industry. Yeah. That really would be um, fantastic. And yeah. then, so, so you guys have been uh, operational for four years now. Yes, four years, yeah. yeah. We and actually turn four in a couple of days' time. Uh, when? On the 28th of September. 28th? Yes. yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That's four and 28th of September. Yeah. That's great. And previously you spoke about the difficulty of this journey. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, what are some of the, the challenges you face in keeping a space like this uh, running? Uh, I think the biggest challenge... Yeah. You know, it's, it's all driven by passion, you know? I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> to do this all the time, you know? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's infrastructure, yeah. I think the biggest challenge is infrastructure. Expand and that infrastructure in what sense? Infrastructure in Zimbabwe, you know, there is so much more to the arts realm than just a gallery, you know. Yeah. Uh, auction houses play a role. We don't have those in Zimbabwe, you know. Yeah. Uh, you've got valuers, evaluators, you know, we don't have anyone valuing and certifying art, uh, especially from, you know, artists that are deceased and things of that sort. Yeah. Some people have to export their art to other countries for that, to get a certificate, you know. Uh, we, we've started to issue out certificates for artists that we represent now in our space, but yeah. I mean, in previous instances, I've acquired artworks from other galleries and I didn't get a certificate for that, you know. And this is like a certificate of authenticity. Of authenticity, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. It's a very critical yeah. uh, document when it comes to art because that tells a lot about the provenance of, of an artwork and provenance is literally the story of the origination of the artwork yeah. And, and, and yeah, the continuity of its life, you know. So, so just to cut you off before you, you fully finish making that point, is this, is this the same issue that creates a problem in that, let's say, I, Farai Mudzingwa, is an artist, uh, and then maybe 100 years from now, uh, fakes start popping up, like previous works that I've made, yeah. now there's like counterfeit work, and maybe that counterfeit uh, makes more money than <laughs> yeah. the stuff that I actually, that I actually made. Yeah, that I actually made. Yeah, yeah. Ah. That, that's the contributing element. That's also partly why we opened up an art gallery. Because we realized 
having started acquiring artworks, that we weren't actually building a strong provenance for the collection. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have certificates, there was no authenticity, nothing told, that, nothing told about the story of when we acquired it, where we acquired it from, who we acquired it from, and things why like that. Why they were even Why, yeah, yeah, precisely. The, the and yeah. so we thought, well, if we set up an art gallery, we can start telling those stories and, and creating that, that narrative, and you know, that's where it came from, yeah. Yeah. But it's a, it's a very important aspect of, of the industry, you know. Yeah. And if, if you don't have it, you kind of lose the value element to, to the art. And like you just rightfully mentioned, you know, uh, when you start acquiring art, you start thinking 100 years into the future. Yeah. You, know? you start thinking <laughs> your post-mortem, you know, so am I going to set up a trust? Uh, who, who, who keeps this work after I've passed away and things of that sort, you yeah. know. And I think that's also special, you know, just yeah. the opportunity to yeah. look far into the future like that and imagine... It's something that's like much bigger than yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. And it's something afforded by artists, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's fantastic. And so, is, is there any other challenge beyond the stuff that you mentioned? Uh, apart from infrastructure, I mean, the, with infrastructure comes uh, government support, you know. Uh, it would be really nice for the government to fully appreciate what we've got in Zimbabwean contemporary artists, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're arguably the most talented artists in the world, you know. Yeah. Uh, I've seen people stem from uh, literally rough backgrounds yeah. and they excel in the arts abroad and you know you don't even realize where they walked out from when they yeah. were coming from home <laughs> you know and back home you hardly have people recognize there's hardly them. conversation yeah, yeah. there's hardly them. conversation around them you know uh, I, I aspire for us to celebrate visual artists as much as we celebrate musicians and yeah. things of that sort yeah. you know, see them walk down the streets and, and you, you recognize know, them and pop out your camera <laughs> and take a picture you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that day is coming, I think. Yeah, I believe so. I think it is. Yeah. It's just a process that maybe takes a bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we're on, we're on our way. And yeah. then we, one of the things we talked about just there was <clears throat> things that, you know, live beyond us and, and how a lot of these um, games, and I don't mean it disrespectfully, but a lot of these things that we're doing are... <clears throat> Uh, they live beyond our own lives, right? And yeah. so another thing you said previously was that uh, you're interested in unwrapping what Africa has lost over time. Um, why is that something that's important to you? Why does that resonate with you? Well, I think that... I think I really strongly believe that Africa is the cradle of mankind. You know, I honestly believe that this is the birthplace of all of human existence, you know. Yeah. And through that, I also appreciate that this is the home of all ingenuity, you know. All brilliant intelligence, you know, uh, stems from Africa. I think everybody else that has become what they've become uh, in other spaces around the world have done that through an observation of what Africans are doing, you know. Yeah. Uh, even when you realize the re resilience that Africans have, uh, the compassion that we have, the love, the welcoming nature, it, it really feels like the heartbeat of the world, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so because of that, I feel like because we've been disrupted by, you know, elements of colonization and things yeah. of that sort, yeah. it feels like there was a disruption of the, the original ecosystem of yeah, the world. That you rhythm. Know? Yeah, yeah. And so I've got a hunger to actually tap into that and appreciate what we've lost and where we could have been if we hadn't lost all of that. You yeah. know? And, and that's why I kind of have an appreciation of, of bringing back the past lost knowledge and you know, celebrating it. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, I, I think I share those, uh, those sentiments with you. <laughs> wow, awesome. And then <clears throat> one of the things that uh, I recently stumbled into, <laughs> and this is as, as we get closer to, to, to like closing off, is uh, digital art. Um, and I've been deeply fascinated, I think, over the past few days, and I hope it's a fascination that's not passing, <laughs> by... Um, computer-generated art. Uh, right. So maybe let me just uh, paint a picture for you. What, uh, one of the tools, what it does is you, you type in what you're thinking. All right. And it 
makes an artwork. It makes <laughs> artwork. And so I typed in, what really caught my fancy is I, I typed in, I think I typed in Mbuyani Handa in a cyberpunk world. Mm -hmm. And it brought something that was really like <laughs> impressive, right? So I'll put it up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> but it, it brought, and, and I'll show you after this. Right. Uh, it brought up something that like really shocked me because I was like, wow. <laughs> that <laughs> this just is, happened? <laughs> this is, it, was, it was really surreal. I did not expect what it brought up. Right. And so I was wondering, have you seen this trend? And maybe like, what are your thoughts about that? Because I was really conflicted uh, because it felt unnaturally quick. Okay. Because I, I speak as a person who is not an artist in, in, in the sense of like visual art, right? right. I'm not, I don't paint, I don't draw. So just having, typing that in and then having something come up was, it was conflicting because it was amazing, but it was like, yo, did I earn this? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, so what are your thoughts about that space, like digital art and AI art, all of that. Man. Right, right, yeah. The stuff that's going on right now. I feel very indebted to literally give back to the digital space. Yeah. Why? Because like I said, uh, I have a graphic design background myself, you know. Yeah. And we used to be in graphic studios and we'd be talking amongst ourselves and, and you know, we'd be questioning each other and say, we are, confirm we are artists, right? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of that conversation yeah, that happens. You feel like a fraud. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that conversation that happens in, in advertising agency studios and things of that nature and so since i opened the gallery i always felt like i owe it to my background to eventually celebrate uh, the digital realm of art you know yeah. and interesting enough like you're saying you know now it's becoming even more relevant more yeah. present you've got nfts coming up yeah. and these are all spaces that the visual artist who paints is unfamiliar with you yeah know? unfortunately as i as I started to focus on the visual artist, I also lost my traction with digital what was going on with the art. digital realm. <laughs> and so much has, has just happened, happened in a short yeah. space of time yeah. that now we need to catch up and learn as well. What's happening? What's the modern trend? How can we participate in that? Yeah. Uh, but it's something that I'm very keen to actually venture into. Uh, I have been in conversation with some digital artists and some graphic designers wanting to celebrate them and show just the pros that they have and that the narrative is also as consistent as, you know, uh, yeah. painting on a canvas, you know. So there are areas that we would like to venture into and celebrate. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also kind of excited about it. Yeah. And hey, it's the future, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I suppose there's that, right? It's, yeah. it's just, it, it also gives people a chance. It's, what's the best way to say it? It's uh, dem democratizing art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't have the canvas to paint on, they don't necessarily have maybe the software to yeah. make digital art. Yeah. Maybe that's where they start. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, now we've got you've got performance art as well. You've got video art. Exactly. You know, uh, <laughs> art has become whatever you really want it to it's, be. It's so broad. Know? Yeah. It's, it's become very broad. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a it's, it's a fair thing. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel less guilty going forward. <laughs> we might actually put up a show uh, in December. I've met a certain artist. I'm very excited about him. Uh, yeah. he, he's, he's a graphic artist himself, but yeah. would love to put him in a gallery and celebrate him. And so hopefully that will be our first double in digital in, art, in digital yeah, art. In the digital space. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's fantastic. I, I hope that comes to fruition. I'll, I'll come through and experience that. Yeah, and yeah. then maybe lastly, and this is something um, I didn't ask you beforehand. <clears throat> um, what do you think is what does maybe the next five or ten years look like for artillery gallery in your head um if, if it's something that you you actively think about the next 10 or five years i've yeah. thought about that for a while <laughs> <laughs> uh, to begin with uh, i'd really like to make real art a success uh, whether it's in its context as real art or if it becomes something else, maybe we'll collaborate with other people and become something else. Yeah. But I envision it as an expansion of this gallery's walls, you know? And so our aspiration is to build the largest gallery on the African continent in collaboration with the people that enjoy it in their homes, you know? Yeah. And, and then through that and through the body of work that we would probably collect through that entire experience, yeah. I'd love to see a museum come about as well. 
uh, a contemporary art museum in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about this before on our social media. We still believe in that. Uh, I hope to do the groundbreaking in 2033. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it's, yeah, so it's almost about 10 years from now. Yeah, essentially, it's, it's uh, that period, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. the aspiration is to have uh, more public art as well. Yeah. yeah. We would love to contribute to having more public art in Zimbabwean spaces, have people more inspired. So it's public art, it's museums Museum. open for people and, to and appreciate the culture. And art in people's homes, you yeah. know, in their homes and offices, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's sensational, Peter. Thank you so much for, for giving me your time. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate this. Thank you very and, much. And Brad. the work that you're doing. And thank you too. Thank you for supporting the art space and what you're doing. When I talked about infrastructure, it's also this that you're yeah. doing, you know. It's, it's a part of the necessary infrastructure. And I appreciate you for, for playing your role in all of this. And it helps us all grow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you.